you will find many containerized cargo are showing the damages, water damages. You should understand that there is a cargo sweating and you should also understand that there is a chances of the, the container rains and cargo rains, what we call it sweating, condensation, rains. Now why it is there, you will find 1 out of 10 or 2 out of 10 containers, they are, they are damages, there, is a, there are water damages. Try to understand as a surveyor what you do first. What we are trying to do is uh, we are trying to find out that is there any breaches to the container? Are there are any damages to container? That from where cargo is uh, the uh, uh, is damaged? Is there any rainwater entry? Once the rainwater entry, because what happens if there is a breaches? There is a hole. There is a crack on a container. Any rainwater entry or whatever entry is there from the outside, it will be restricted to that particular area in the container. Only that particular stack of bags will get damaged or the cartons will get damaged. But when you see the water damages all over the container and then there is the, the container is in good condition externally and internally, then the chances of condensation cannot be ruled out. Even sea water that you take a sample, analyze the sample. The water in PPT is not giving the indication that there are sodium chloride damages. Because sodium chloride in sea water is around 3 percentage. So if you get a in a sample analysis approximately 2.5 percent to 3 percent, then yes, you can say conclusively that this could be a the damages which is attributed to uh, sea water. And then you should understand the various problems related with the container, with the condensation, with the container rains. I have thought of preparing this module for the benefit of participants. Now you should understand about the cargo and container rains. There is a moisture in cargo, there is also a moisture in trapped. Try to understand that one cubic meter of air, considering the temperature, can retain air inside, uh, can retain moisture. Say for example, if the temperature, it is a rough formula, it is not a 100% because it is not going a straight line method. So you try to understand that if the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius, one cubic meter of air is going to have 35 grams of moisture and then when the temperature is reduced from 35 degrees Celsius because ambient temperature is reduced, if it is reduced to for example 20 degree, the 15 grams of moisture per cubic meter will be released. So you should understand the container rain is caused by moisture. Most shipping containers are loaded near the ocean where air has a higher humidity. The relative humidity is more. The moisture in the air gets trapped in the container. As I said that, you know how much air is there, how much moisture is there in the air? Rough formula, considering the temperature, you can say so many grams per cubic meter. 35 degree, 35 grams. 30 degree, 30 grams. 45 degree, 45 grams per cubic meter. And then the air and what happened? The air in the container settles the moisture which condenses in the colder areas of the container. So the whenever the temperature drop is there, naturally the temperature drop will start, start from the container sheeting, container uh, you can say the structural sites and then from there the, the moisture condensation would start. So when the container heats up again, See what happened, the nighttime temperature is different, daytime temperature is different. So when the container is, when it heats up again, the condensed water expands and the rises on top of the container, clinging to the walls, ceilings and moisture. You can see the photograph what we have seen here. As the temperature increases, the moisture climbs up the interior of the container before dropping it down, dripping it down. This is what commonly referred as a container rain. 
should a container rain drips into cargo, moisture sensitive good, the machine surface, electronic atoms, and if the containers are not provided with the desiccant bags, if they are not lined with the craft paper, if the ventilators are not tapped tape properly, then it will start destruction of the cargo. What will happen? There will be growth of mold growth. Uh, 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 and then naturally the, the machine surface would get damaged and there would be damages. So you should take care whenever there is a cargo which is a moisture sensitive, you should avoid condensation of the cargo. So what is shipping container condensation? See basically shipping container condensation takes place when the walls of the container, the sides of the container, the roofing of container which is becoming cooler than the dew point of the air found inside the container. Now because shipping containers are crafted from metal, they are made, they are 99 percent they are made, if it is refer container etc, forget about it, but then normally it is a mild steel sheeting what they are using it for the purpose of manufacturing of containers. So the internal temperatures can shift significantly due to weather changes. See what happened that the skin temperature outside, you keep it in sunlight, say maybe in Gujarat in month of May, the skin temperature can be more than 55 degree for the, uh, the container. The, uh, the ambient temperature may be 40, 40 degree, but then because it is lying in uh, exposed to sun, continuously to the sun and it is a, it is directly exposed to sun, the, the temperature can really, really will be much more. And then we should know, we should understand that these external factors. So when the container is cool at night time, so in Gujarat, night time container, uh, the, the intense, the intensity of heat in winter is also much more because there are no clouds. So what happens in the container night time when it is cooling down significantly, the air no longer able to contain its moisture as it has reached its dew point. What I am trying to say that it is a rough formula that if the temperature is 40 degree, there would be 40 grams of moisture retained in the air. When the temperature is reducing, this moisture will fall down. How much? If from 40 degree, if it becomes 30 degree, the 10 degree moisture will fall down per cubic meter of the air. So when this takes place, the moisture fall out of vapor into liquid form. This is this is then the builds and collects on the walls and roof. This is condensation can drip on your cargo and it can ruin the container interior, resulting in insignificant losses. This will result into significant losses. I am sorry, not in, in, insignificant, significant losses. The shipping condensation is also known as container rain and this can damage cargo because of the packaging is, deteri is deteriorated. There will be a formation of mold and mildew. There would be corrosion to some of the parts if it is a machine surface or if it is electronic atoms. There would be warping. There are certain commodities will start caking and it will start the attract fungus, it will uh, and then powder found uh, the caking of powder, powdery material we will find until lumpy. So this is very much important to learn how to stop condensation in shipping container to avoid these effects. Have recently we have come across the 16 containers sent from JNPT to uh, Bahrain and you will not believe no it, uh, they have not taken any precaution, no desiccant bags, there is nothing, no craft paper lining, nothing is provided and it has reached after two transshipments, the consignment reached after one month when they opened the container, all maize consignments were sprouting up. So this is, they have not taken, this is, the uh, packaging was not adequate, the preparation of subject matter was not adequate and such type of losses are not honored by the insurance company. You have to understand that there are three stages, there are three shipment stages. What is the first stage? The first stage is time from container stuffing until container is loaded into a ship, which includes road transport and brief period of storage. What is the second? 
the second stage is the actual time at sea or aboard vessel ship and the third stage it is the final stage begins when container is offloaded from the ship continuing until the freight is discharged from the container this may include varying periods of time spent in customs on trains in trucks in inland transit and maybe during temporary storage so now you try to understand that insurance company is also giving if it is coming by uh, sea 60 days coverage longer the period storage in port the chances of condensation damages are much more the significant temperature gradients between summer and southern hemisphere and winter in the northern hemisphere are highly possible can severely influence the condensation exposure during an ocean voyage a sudden fall in temperature can also lead to higher probability of condensation water formation below the ship's deck or in the container you see the the, the condensation is there even in the ship for a break bulk consignments also there has to be certain precautions taken so what happened the result in this it is a dripping sweat when causes considerable cargo losses over intensive cooling of the cargo surfaces may also lead to condensation water formation directly on the cargo which is a cargo sweat we see what happens the sea journey normally otherwise you know if we can understand southern hemisphere and northern hemisphere but otherwise normal sea journey there is not much variation in the temperature whether it is a day or a night during loading also it will not take too much of a time because the the carting the carting is carried out when the ship is dominated and it doesn't take too much of time for the loading the problem is after unloading if it takes much more time the problem is if there is a transshipment it remains in transshipment for uh, say 10 days 15 days if there is a multi multiple transshipments and then it remains in the port for multiple days so longer the journey the chances of condensation damages are much more this has to be appreciated now there are specific requirements for container loading what are the specific requirements that firstly before stuffing the containers every empty container is fully inspected on the exterior and interior all the containers in which bags are loaded must be found suitable for loading the goods for human consumption with respect to cleanliness dryness free from any foreign smell or odor free from cracks proper closing no insects no rodents the proper rubber seals the the container seal should be in good condition the interior and exterior paint and wooden flooring is also reasonably intact no holes no potential leakages are found normally as a surveyor what we do we go inside close the door during day time and then then we see if if there is any penetration of sunlight from the outside or if, during night time you can have a lead lamp and try to check each side if if at all if you want to be still sure there can be hose test what is hose test you spray water on container from outside and you see inside any leakages if it is there now the second thing to check the cargo is secure because the vessel is having 60 degree freedom the vessel is roll it is having rotational movement it is having liner movement and x y z axis she is having movements two two movements even if you take it then there are six movements what we call 6 degree freedom to to take care of this 6 degree freedom the cargo must be lashed properly in the container it should be supported properly with the dunnages maybe uh, the dunnage bags are there the rubber bags are there cushioning is there so all these things has to be provided properly then to check the the once you check the cargo is secured then what we have to check to check for the presence and absence of any pest because the pest can damage you know Uh, the cargo so absence of pest fumigation uh, see there are there there are fungicides there are pesticides the pests are different 
the the fungi is are different fungi is are different so you have to take care from the both considering nature of your cargo and possibility of damages and what is the the requirement of the uh, what is the rejection uh, standards of the receiver the buyer the fourth is line container walls see all the sides to be lined including floor with a craft paper sheeting this is very very important and place of sitting on the top of bags you see don't put the uh, the gum paper tapes or gum because that gum will also attract there is a possibility it will attract the pest so you have to line the container walls with a craft paper and place sheeting on top of the bags there should be a, once you load it on top also there should be a craft paper now we have to use desiccants desiccants are silica gel it can be calcium chloride so this calcium chloride based desiccants of interior container walls on the sheeting based on length of length and time of time this is very very important you have to have the desiccants considering the length of journey how long you have to go because you provide uh, we have seen one case uh, in vietnam the con uh, containers reach after say 70 days because of transshipment there was some problem some detention and the desiccant bags were totally saturated the consignment of chili was totally damaged so we have to see the we should have the damage the, the desiccant considering the journey period you 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 understand so the the uh, calcium chloride based desiccant should be placed horizontally along interior of the container walls or laid on top of the tire of the sheeting and maintain a minimum of 20 cm head space for optimal effectiveness vent of container should be closed by or tape closed there are vents provided the air can come inside but the water cannot come inside the design of vents is such so you, it it is necessary to tape that one you see you have to see the type of cargo the nature of cargo and then you decide all this thing the consignment of onions required lot of breathing so you will find a half door or the one part of door is open in container they will give such a ventilation so you have to consider this and then the duct tape is not to be used again i am telling you the duct tape is not to be used when when adhering the craft paper sheeting to the walls on the container as it has shown to act as a potential insect attractant so you have to be very careful how to prepare container inspect it line it ventilators to be close provide desiccants considering the journey period journey time now the considerations that how many desiccants are required by volumes now normally generally you may get a pack of 125 grams pack is available say for 20 feet container now this is this particular the method of stuffing container taking precautions placement of desiccants etc this particular slide uh, this particular presentation i have prepared from the international food organizations bulletin they have given how if it is a food item how the container has to be stuffed and what precautions you have to take so now for example if the journey period is 15 to 60 days then the 72 bags of calcium chloride based desiccants are required if it is 60 to 90 days 90 bags are required and 90 to 120 days it is 108 bags of calcium chloride based desiccants are required you look at the thing that side how the container pictures are there if you want to have the further information you can always get it from Uh, international food organization or maybe you can contact me you can always get my telephone number and i can mail you that particular bulletin which is available it is not that something new but then it is clearly telling you that how many desiccant bags how how craft paper to be lined and then if it is 20 feet naturally if it is a 40 feet you require more you require double because cargo is more the chances of condensation are more so you have to take precaution when such desiccant bags are to be provided if you take precaution the chances of losses are reduced are much less now when you have 
uh, say 40 feet container and you have you, you want to stuff 40 feet container now definitely desiccant bags required are much more so i have given a table table for that so if it is 50 to 59 days you require 140 bags of calcium uh, chloride a base desiccant 60 to 89 bags 89 days it is 180 bags 90 to 120 days you require 200 bags of desiccant there are different types of desiccant there can be uh, montanol uh, like clay the silica gel there could be molecular synthetic zeolite okay and then calcium oxide calcium sulfate so there are different types of uh, uh, the desiccant bags are available you can always check the the, the 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 manufacturer will also tell you that what is the period you required how many bags you required for 20 days 40 days you adhere to the instructions given by how much what instruction he is giving uh, the the OEM of towards the I have seen one case the consignment has gone to Korea and then the he said that yes there were desiccants provided then I said you give me the OEM specification OEM sped that if your journey is 30 days you require say 30 uh, 25 or 30 desiccant bags of 250 grams or whatever it is but the actual journey period was say 60 to 90 days then I said this is not sufficient you know uh, and then you should always consider that there would be some transshipment there would be certain delays and maybe you know you give proper factor of safety when you are deciding that how many bags to be placed in the, in the container you look at it that they have stuffed the bags and on top of it there is a craft paper on top also they have provided the desiccant bags to avoid condensation losses now it is a requirement of various countries say Australia or say New Zealand whenever certain cellulose based items are coming baby packaging maybe along with the consignment the container has to be fumigated so you have to see that fumigation which fumigation to be used uh, and uh, considering the desiccants what you have provided in the container so when I said WFP that is a world food program if you go on a Google and try to find out what is a world food program container stuffing precautions for the food stuffing in container you will get the entire information very very nicely and you can adhere to that one you use it that one as a guideline when you are stuffing a container you see WP has indicated that only phosphine gas can be employed during fumigation the fumigant phos phosphatoxin or aluminium phosphide reacts very very vigorously with the liquid water and may form an explosive gas all fumigation is to be completed prior to desiccants being applied in the loaded containers the desiccant packaging should maintain a separation between any fumigant as it is recognized that accidentally torn desiccant bags may release liquid gel and this will definitely what will happen it will pose a potential hazard so fumigation of commodities with phosphatoxin must be performed on a warehouse floor under the tarp not in container okay so this is the precautions what you should be taking now let us come to the insurance cargo loss and settlement of claim concentrations the condensation damages are not covered under the policy maybe some of the insurance company they will add that we are cover uh, the condensation damages are also covered but then 99.99 percentage because they say that there has to be fortuity there has to be accident so which water damages will be covered if containers are breached if there are damages if there are accident and if the if there is a flooding and the container is uh, uh, it is on the ground and the water is ingressing inside all these things and if the rainwater is going because of the bridge damage container now the damages are because of some external impact maybe the kalmar handling is damaging the container 
while handling of the container it is getting damaged. Now this damages, if water damages are there, it is covered under the policy. But the, the container is in sound condition externally, internally and if there is a condensation damage and when the insured, uh, when the surveyor and the insurance company finds that there is no precautions taken in the container, it is evidencing from the photograph. Definitely it will not be covered under the policy. So try to understand that all risk does not mean it is all losses. But losses caused by fortuity or accidental uh, circumstances, namely accidental losses as opposed to losses that are bound by certain happen given in the nature of the property, that is the inherent nature of the property insured or in the void in question. So they are not, they are not covering this condensation. In a way, it is because of inherent nature. It, it, it can be minimized, it can be avoided, may not be 100%. So the requirement that the cause of loss has to be fortuitous excludes the natural and inevitable action of wind and waves, ordinary wear and tear, inherent defects and intentionally cause losses. They are not covered under the, uh, the policy. It is, it is as per Marine Insurance Act 1963, which we are following, uh, which is also based on Marine Insurance Act 1906 of UK. So what are the essentials in order to establish that the loss is fortuitous or accidental? It is an accident and caused by intervention of negligence or adverse or unusual conditions without which the loss would not have occurred. There must be some casualty, something which could not be foreseen as one of the necessary incidents of the adventure. In other words, what I said, that if accidentally container is damaged and if there is a water ingress, then definitely uh, the claim is payable. But if it is not, there is no accident, containers are in sound condition and then internally if you find damages, the intention of insurance company is not to pay such claims. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have come to end of my presentation on condensation and precautions to be taken. So let us summarize this, what I said. I said that there could be a cargo and container sweating, which is also known as a cargo and container rains. This can damage the cargo, it will develop the fungus, it will develop the mold growth, it will develop the pest and then this has to be avoided by taking proper precautions. The proper precautions is given also in the World Food Program, the bulletin what they have published on container stuffing. You can go through that and you will get the detailed information. So what precautions are there? You line the container with a craft paper, bottom to be also having the craft paper, then the ventilators to be tapped. Also considering the journey period and the 20 feet or 40 feet container, provide sufficient desiccant bags, could be silica gel or calcium uh, carbide, whatever it is, you know, whatever desiccants you are using, use it. Be careful when you are fumigating the cargo and then try to understand that when it comes to the insurance claim, the intention of insurance company is not to cover any condensation damages. They are not covered because there is no accident, there is no fortuity. The risk clause 1 is, is avoiding the this type of damages. There has to be fortuity. And then maybe if, if there is a container is in damaged condition because of impact after accident, and then the water is ingressing inside, then it will be covered under the policy, but not otherwise. So take proper precautions, understand the inherent nature of the product, understand what is the condensation problems and then you will have the loss free uh, journey.